Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Church in Kansas City on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Deacon Donna and I and the whole congregation are happy to worship with you this morning. A bulletin for this service can be found online. There is a link in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on or in an email from the church. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the second book of Samuel. Now the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him. The king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of the Lord stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you, you, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since that day. I brought the people out of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel who commanded to shepherd the people of Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from the following of sheep, to be prince over the people of Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that you may live in a place in their own and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from that time that I appointed judges over my people of Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings that is made known to all Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Taking a very broad view of the Bible, one can see a common thread of a story about how God is trustworthy and people, for the most part, are not. God does God's part, and we human beings, typically, are wicked and sinful anyway. Surely God does not find us to be trustworthy. But there are a few exceptions. St. Mary, for example. In Mary's case, I think that the term trustworthy doesn't quite capture God's regard for her. The angel Gabriel called her most highly favored lady, as the famous hymn translated it into English. And she was told that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and that she would give birth to a son who would be called the Son of the Most High and who would be given the throne of his ancestor David. That is much more than trustworthy. Actually, that is vulnerable. God became vulnerable to a human being when God in the person of Jesus entered that womb, when God relied upon that human being for nurture and sustenance and protection and love and all of the things that human children need and too often don't get. I wonder if God could be vulnerable to us. Well, I believe that God is vulnerable to us because, because each one of us has the ability to break God's heart or to please God by our humility and obedience. Most highly favored Mary did not break God's heart. 
Mary sang, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Zechariah sang at the birth of his son John, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. With the confidence that God does look favorably upon lowly servants, each of us lowly servants might ask of ourselves, in what ways does God find me trustworthy? In what ways is God vulnerable to me? In what ways do I break God's heart? In what ways do I please God? Mary's gift to the world is the model of the human being whom God found to be worthy of trust, worthy of favor, worthy of vulnerability. So we might ask ourselves, how am I like Mary, and what do I need to work on? More to the point for this season of Advent, expectation and preparation, which will end at sundown today, we might ask, Am I ready to receive the baby Jesus? Not in my womb, not in my manger, but in my heart and mind. Am I ready to be his hands and feet to a world in need?
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker Lord, of heaven Lord, and earth, of, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Savannah. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by violence and natural disasters, especially Clay Glenn, John Carmichael, Richard Bateman, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Ann Ralston Brown, Sherry Candilo, Carter, Kathleen Clark, Mark Connolly, Dana, Doug, John Dunn, Fran Dyer, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Father Harry Firth, Alex and Susan Green, Jennifer Brown Hardick, Michael Hendon, Jim, Joe and Pam, Ed Joyner Jr., Karen Joyner, Lachlan, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Leo, Madison, Patricia Meglaris, Tyler and Tara Markham, Gabe Markham, Dave Masden, John Matthews, Jeannie McDowell, Tom Miles, Marcia Miller, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, William Michael Ritchie, Tom Carley and Theo Roberton, Judith Rojas, Dick Strong, Courtney and Tim Sturgis, David Vink, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, Bill Winslow, Zay, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Lauren Batson, Alex Battle, Matthew Carmichael, Aaron Delgado, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Luciana Larea, Sean Perrone, Chaz Porter, Samantha and Clint Hubbard, Dan Sanford, and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Steve Adams, Hank Alberg, Peyton George, Jesse Mays, Terry Roselle, and Ruth Franklin. Let us pray as our Savior Christ hath taught us, saying, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.